In this example, I have three clips set up to play three different instruments. This is done by assigning each instrument to a chain and automating the chain selector in the clips. With the 16 macros device, I can control those three instruments from the 16 dials. And these dials can be MIDI mapped. So in this scenario, we only need 8 MIDI controls to control 24 macros. To make a preset, we first need to turn on Learn Mode. When this mode is activated, you can assign parameters to the 16 macros device by clicking on them. When Learn Mode is turned off, the preset is saved with the preset number that is currently visible in the save box. Each time you save a preset, the save box automatically jumps to the next preset number. To create the presets in this example, I just need to turn on Learn Mode, select the chain I want to access and click on the 8 macros that I want to control. When Learn Mode is turned off, I turn it back on again and select the next group of parameters. Now that the presets are stored, I can load the group of parameters I want to control by changing the value in the load box. It's possible to control more than just device parameters. You can control track volumes, send and return levels, the tempo and the global groove amount. Pretty much everything that can be minimapped can be controlled with the 16 macros device. When you press the show tracks button, the labels of the dials will briefly display to which track they are mapped. When you remove a device from a set, the mapping automatically vanishes with it. There is no function to delete presets, but you can override the preset with an empty one. If I load preset 5, which is empty, and save it to preset slot 4, then that preset will be empty too. In this scenario, I actually need control over a group of parameters when a specific clip is triggered. This is why I created the clip mapper device. This device allows me to load a preset on the 16 macros device when a specific clip is triggered. First, you select a number between 1 and 64 to map a clip to. Then you turn on the map clip button. Now you can map a clip to this number by clicking on the clip. When you mapped a clip, the map clip button turns itself off and you will see a yellow dot appear in the matrix of 64 grey dots. When the mapped clip is triggered, the dot that corresponds to that clip turns red. To make this device load the preset on the 16 macros device, we need to map it to the load box of that device. Turn on learn mode and click on the load box in the 16 macros device. Now, when the clip that is mapped to number 1 is triggered, the 16 macros device will jump to the preset that corresponds to that number. There is an even easier way to create presets on the clip mapper device. Shift click on the dot that you want to map to. This turns on the map clip button and jumps to the number of that dot. Then click on the clip you wish to map. Repeat this for all other clips you wish to map. Now I have control over the instruments that correspond to each of the clips. When a clip is triggered, the 16 macros device immediately jumps to a preset. But maybe you want to take control over the instrument when the clip actually starts playing. In this case, you can turn on quantize mode on the clip mapper device. When you delete the clip, it will no longer be mapped. But you can move tracks, clips and devices around as much as you like, and the mappings of both devices will stay intact and are stored with live sets, live clips and presets.